tonight on Hip on the Spot News. The Apache release is very close, we hope to live and see it. The supercarrier locks its course for new features. Bugs are getting smashed with a new open beta patch. And we discuss the long-awaited dynamic campaign feature in DCS World. This and more on How I Play. Hello Virtual Pilots, I'm Andre Celesti and tonight we are going to talk about the latest news in DCS World. The AH-64D testing had great traction with a good response and ED reassured us that the Apache is just around the corner with its imminent release. The initial damage model and radio communications are now complete, and they are currently working on multi-crew synchronization, improving frame rates and TADS functionality. Meanwhile, the showcase videos are progressing well, this time with a focus on the rockets. We got a two-part video that shows off the unguided rockets and the use of the M261 rocket pod, mentioning that at the early access release, we will be able to use the M151 and 229 high explosive 7 pounders, the M257 illumination and M274 smoke plus the M282 multi-purpose penetrator rockets. Now, ED notes that while it is possible for the co-pilot gunner to employ rockets, it's happening very rare outside of training, and thus the rockets are being employed by the pilot. The co-pilot gunner provides accurate laser ranging and steering commands to the pilot via the rocket steering cursor and TADS. In the videos, we get to understand how to aim the rockets using the line of sight reticle and rocket steering cursor. We recommend you check it out if you missed it, it includes explosive stuff. After that, we got to see the AGM-114 Hellfire 2 missiles in action. With two primary versions, the semi-active laser homing and the active radar homing. The radar homing version will come later during early access, when they will add the fire control radar. But at release, we will have the AGM-114K laser version, known as SAL. Weighting at 100 pounds and packing a high-explosive anti-tank warhead, its practical range is around 8 kilometers, and the Apache can carry up to 16 Hellfires into combat. Impressive. Matt Wagner shows the two modes in which we can fire the missile. The autonomous mode, in which your aircraft is laser designating the target, and remote mode, in which another aircraft or ground asset is laser designating the target for you on a matching laser frequency. I had my morning coffee watching the video and it made my day. But wait, there is more. ED made progress on the M206 IR decoy flares, that provides protection against air-to-air -air and surface-to-air infrared weapon systems. The advanced infrared countermeasures munition consists of the M211 flares and supplements the M206 aircraft countermeasure flares. The M211 flares are specially designed for low-flying, slow-moving rotary aircraft. So very soon, if not already, as we publish this video later on, the Apache will be launched and my oh my, the joy it will bring on the battlefield. Maybe together with the expansion of the Syrian map? We will have to wait and see. And as a confirmation for future videos, we got this comment made by Matt Wagner, senior producer at Eagle Dynamics, pointed out by our dear friend iCat on our Discord. It seems that the next video will be about the defensive systems, followed by taxi and takeoff, landing, then a special introduction with George. And of course, the cold start, as tradition. Moving on with news from the supercarrier, the work is essentially finished on the greeny board that is connected to the actual LSO station data, which provides live updates during the mission. They are currently working on the functionality of crew tables where you will be able to see mission briefings as well as check and change loadouts. In addition, the briefing officer can control the projected picture that is visible on the main screen and choose what to show on the auxiliary TV screen located above his head. All of these updates makes me think about something else. More precise? That dynamic campaign that was promised, and the functionality that we could have once implemented. 
We talked about it in our DCS Roadmap Special back in January 13, 2021. Here is a glimpse of the information available then. DCS wants to have a dynamic campaign mode built around the real-time strategy foundation that factors resources, zone of controls, logistics, available forces, and a strategic decision-making system. Now, coming back from that, I always imagine that the dynamic campaign will bring to life the feeling of uncertainty in a DCS campaign. Something that many of our talented campaign creators try so hard to implement with triggers and scripts and probability coding. As we see in recent updates, it is working to bring up multiple functions that will have a place in this module. Cause let's face it, it can be called a module. A free one, in my view. Correct me if I'm wrong. But this would be free, no? Anybody? I see. Uh, where was I? Ah, functionality. So let's take for example the painting map feature. It's a must when borders and areas change in shape, all dictated by moves on the ground and in the air. The AI needs more work as always, but we saw that they are working on that, as well being showcased not too long ago. All the new ground assets that are being either added or updated, the advanced ATC for modern and World War II integration, and of course the logistic system that is already in place and needs a few more tweaks in order to provide an immersive and more exciting environment. I am talking about actual units that can be intercepted to disrupt the supply line and so on. You got my point. Me, personally, I always imagine starting in a briefing room where the mission is being set up, Objectives are marked, loadouts are discussed based on the latest supply report, maybe implementing an economy module to act as the backbone for financing a campaign, taking a different approach to missions that pay more depending on the objective you take and how the war progresses. And then, when the time comes, you cold start your aircraft and taxi to the assigned station where you can access your loadout and fuel that was planned not too long ago. All of this while everything around you is alive and going about their day, with objectives and random events waiting to unfold. You take off and follow your planned route. You have multiple objectives that you already choose to do, with others being assigned in midair as the day progresses. It will be a great feeling and a great adventure in co-op with friends for a casual play or something more intense. At least, that's how I would see it. But please, Tell me what you guys think. How do you see the dynamic campaign getting implemented in DCS world? Leave your comments and suggestions in the comment section down below. I'm actually curious about this and it's not just a hint to comment on my videos. You know very well, I don't do that. Now let's move on with great news for our World War II pilots. A very tricky bug was just smashed by ED, affecting many war birds mostly noticed on the Fokker Wolf 190 D9 Dora. A bug that will cause the engine to suddenly stop after a long duration flight. ED plans to include this fix in the next update. Now more updates are on their way for our Warbird enthusiasts. Looking forward for the next patch that should be here in no time. Now another important notice by ED for the upcoming open beta update was about the Yak-52 that received some flight model enhancements with a more realistic takeoff behavior and better performance in inverted aerobatics maneuvers. When it comes to our naval units, well, it seems that the smoke emitted from exhaust and from impact damage is being improved. Roll and sway effects in windy conditions are also being worked on. Next, they will be working on the collision model of certain ships to improve the impact zone accuracy and anti-radiation missiles such as the AGM-88C HAR. This work is part of a broader enhancement to ship damage model. So all in all, ED is being busy with so many things to come our way this year and we can only wonder what other exciting projects they have prepared for us. And that's it for today. With recent developments in the world, many of you asked around if our favorite simulator would get affected by this. ED released a statement to reassure us that the work will not be interrupted which brings us only hope for a better future. As for the situation in Ukraine, 
I contacted my friends uh, to know of their situation. As some of you may know, I worked in the entertainment industry and for many years I shared the stage with my dear Ukrainian and Russian artists, dancers, singers and performers. Most likely some of you know people or even have family in the region. There are no words that could describe what we feel right now. It's a shame for what is happening, not only now with the war in Ukraine, but with the world in general for quite some time now. But hope is out there. It starts with us. And it starts from within. And now I end this episode dedicated to the ones we lost in recent times, fighting for what is right, and for those who were lost as victims of the current events. I am Andre Celesti, reminding you to fly safe, and I'll see you next time.